Hello everyone. Right now I'm with Aaron von Amers and Jamie Burke, who are developing a startup called Money Circles. Uh, it's credit unions on a blockchain. It's a very interesting idea. First, let's have an introduction from Jamie and Aaron. Jamie. Hi. Yes. Yeah, so hold it. you hold it. Okay. So the um, the genesis of the idea was as an entrepreneur who's done lots of startups um, over the last few years. Um, People understanding my risk profile, getting loans and credit, is uh, is really tricky. So, um, actually, only an entrepreneur can understand an entrepreneur's risk profile. And actually, as an entrepreneur who might end up having a bit of money, socially, you might feel an obligation to lend to people like you, who need it, who might not normally be able to access that credit. So, the premise of money circles was the ability to create savings and loan circles on a common bond with people like you. Mm -hmm. Aaron, yeah, action? well, a bit about my uh, background, right? Yeah, um, yeah uh, I've I've stumbled uh, uh, into blockchains uh, about uh, almost two years ago, mm -hmm. end of uh, 2013, and well, from the financial applications quickly into the the, the, the smart contracts capabilities, uh, it's uh, interested very me very much, and it was like clear to me that this would be uh, a big thing uh, in in a paradigm shift. And well, pretty soon I, I ran into Jamie and uh, we started a partnership doing uh, basically blockchain businesses of which Money Circles is, uh, is one. It's the first proof of concept we've uh, released through an incubator called Outlier Ventures, which so is a dedicated blockchain incubator. Okay. So uh, first, let's go into what exactly is a credit union? Um, well, a credit union effectively is a banking cooperative. So in the UK, they're not that common, but in um, places like the States, Ireland, uh, Germany, uh, and of course, places like India, they are really popular. In places like India, they almost are the, the banking infrastructure. Um, but they're based upon a common bond. So that could be geographic, it could be professional, um, which allows people to save and lend with one another um, and uh, give better terms, both better terms to the saver and the borrower. Okay. So, uh, so in, in, in essence, um, what, what a credit union does is if there's, let's say, you know, 10 of us, let's say it's, it's the Indian community in Europe and there are 10 of us here and there are, say, Indian students in India that right. need money right. and the Indians in Europe, we have money. Right. Then uh, essentially we have a coordination problem that we want to lend money and earn interest. Yes. And the Indian students want to borrow money and pay it back later. That's right. And there's some degree of trust in these two uh, That's right. two sides of the deal. That's right. And a credit union is basically some, some an agency that coordinates these humans to achieve certain certain ends, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, the problem that you've got with credit unions, so credit unions globally is a trillion dollar market, so it's, it's huge. Um, but it's got a number of problems. The first one is its savings to loan ratios are very low. Um, so I think globally it was something like 50, 55%. Um, so a lot of the money that could be lent isn't being lent. Um, and it's not because they don't want to lend, it's because uh, often credit unions operate in silos. Um, so often you might be a fireman in the States, um, so you, you're a member of the Fireman's Credit Union, and you also live in New York State, so you'll be a member of the New York State Credit Union. And the two are disconnected. Um, so they, what happens is, is that the lending only really happens to people within, within that circle, sorry, within that credit union. Um, so what we're doing is we're taking them out of the silo and bringing them onto a network. Um, so effectively by building it on a blockchain you can have uh, circles that overlap that better reflect my, my full social self. So it could be profession, it could be an alumni from a university, it could be friends and family. Um, the, the second problem that uh, a traditional centralised credit union has is governance. Um, so because these are effectively relatively small financial institutions, the, the money is governed by people and usually a very small amount of people, so it's not uncommon that people run off with money. Mm -hmm. um, or there's fraud, employee fraud, um, and often uh, they're not very well ran. Um, so a, a lot of the time you have problems with solvency. So by bringing them onto a blockchain, we can obviously solve governance issues really easily because you can see where the money is at any time, what loans are out. Um, and uh, by bringing them into a network of circles, you solve the siloed problem. Um, so our idea is actually to work initially with the credit union marketplace, not to replace them, um, but to provide them with an infrastructure that allows them to improve their savings to loans ratio and improve governance. 
Yeah, Eric, exactly. something to add? Yeah, well, the, the example that you mentioned is a really good illustration of, uh, of how uh, a credit union form of, of uh, saving lending could work, but now cannot because of this, this siloedness, because the people, the, the, the students in India that you were talking about and the people here uh, who, who might want to lend the money, they definitely don't reach each other in the current credit union world because there would be a credit union in India and one over here and they would be disconnected. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, opening that up and uh, also opening uh, possibilities to uh, start uh, circles on, on different than the more traditional common bonds that you would usually have a, have a credit union for uh, will open up many possibilities to, to, uh, yeah, to better saving and lending, basically. I think the difference is that um, credit unions by default have to operate at a, a kind of a, a macro level. Um, so they have to have as large a group as possible. Um, so whilst initially we're targeting credit unions for scale, the end game is to have our own peer-to-peer -peer lending license or an equivalent e-money lending license that will enable anybody to create any circle for any purpose as long as it's not for illicit means. So we'll still have to do know your customer and all that kind of stuff. But effectively you will enable, you'll have a marketplace of different circles. You'll have some large centralised institutional circles. Um, and then you'll have a long tail of um, more niche circles bespoke to kind of your your social your, your social self. Okay, so so you've mentioned three advantages of this this approach. Um, one is overlapping circles. One is uh, uh, the the transfer governance advantages right. of, of of the blockchain, and the third one was. Uh, so it's to help the savings and loans ratio. So um, there's a lot of money, you kind of got a disconnect in the market. You've got millions of people currently locked out of credit markets because of their risk profile um, that actually carries through to credit unions are known uh, to be able to assess somebody's um, cre credit profile in a, in a different way because they look at it from a social dimension in a way a bank wouldn't. But equally, they're still kind of tied to very traditional ways of, uh, of kind of assessing that, that uh, uh, risk. So as such uh, they can't lend as much money as they'd like. Um, what we're doing is introducing kind of two levels so the administrator for a circle can um, assess risk and therefore whether somebody can lend um, based on two parameters. Some will be external uh, traditional credit data um, and then one will be a, a network wide trust score um, which will be based upon individuals interactions with circles. In, within the network, so not one circle but multiple circles. And it'll be based upon whitelisting, so positive relationships rather than necessarily negative relationships. Okay. Uh, so the idea is that um, we should always have a circle for somebody, somewhere, no matter what their past history is. Um, of course, you would expect a circle set up for people specifically that um, have a, uh, a, a, a low or high risk score. Um, they will ask for more interest, but you would imagine that some people would feel an obligation to lend to those that are effectively in living in a permanent state of indebtedness. Mm -hmm. But the point is that we centrally don't have to solve any of those problems. We're providing a tool to allow people to create those niches and those parameters themselves. Okay, so the first advantage is, um, is essentially the advantage that if I, if let's say I was a lender uh, and I wanted to lend money through credit unions then the thing is i might be involved with a couple of different communities so for example it might be natural for me to lend money to indian students it right. might be natural for me to lend money to crypto entrepreneurs because right. i know them right mm -hmm. and maybe if there's a third community like the virtual reality community i'm involved in that might be a third circle for me right. and today with the conventional model it might be the case that um, i need to open accounts at each of these uh, credit unions separately? Yeah, if they would exist, you would definitely yeah. uh, go through uh, KYC and the whole uh, well, that's the, the sign to, up process. To step there's back, the important point is you, you wouldn't be able to find a credit union for those that niches. in the first place, yeah. yeah. Because actually, um, whilst they're a lot easier to set up than a bank, um, they can still take up to a year to get a license. You have to be able to prove that you've got up to kind of five years worth of funds based on your growth projections. So it's it's very complex and the barriers are way too high for you to be able to serve very niche uh, lending communities. Um, with money circles, um, there will be an algorithm that will determine it will effectively give you parameters that you can create a circle in, um, but but um, the, the principle is you should be able to create a circle for anything for any niche. Um, there will be a minimum threshold of people and a minimum threshold of a treasury, 
um, that will then dictate how much money can be lent at any particular point. But in theory, I like the idea that I live in a very small village um, just outside of London, and I like the idea that um, there could be a lending circle for that village. So everybody knows each other. Everyone can say, yes, this person can be accepted in. Um, I could even say, I accept this person in, um, and personally, I would recommend the circle only lend them £100. When they then make a loan, a loan request, I don't see that loan request. No individual approves it. It's the, the, the circle, the smart contract that approves it. So it's impersonal um, by way of borrowing and lending, so it doesn't uh, lessen or r ruin so real social relationships because there'll be defaults. Um, but what it means is the parameters w with which that circle uh, chooses who can join and the parameters on which they can lend are socially driven. Okay, cool. And then because because this whole interaction, so so essentially, essentially this is the theme in many of the smart contract ideas is essentially that it solves the coordination problem between humans. So many people wanting to lend and many people wanting to borrow, and they find it difficult to coordinate. Yeah. And I uh, and essentially, Aaron, you as a technical person will build a smart contract, a suit of smart contracts that solves the coordination problem between these, and exactly. the people can. Look at the smart contract and, and have certain <coughs> assurances that their money will be handled in a certain uh, predefined standard, right? Yeah, it's exactly that. Uh, we uh, currently have our, our proof of concept out and it, uh, it uh, illustrates uh, uh, at least part of that process where um, all the transactions within uh, the, the money circles from the creation of circles to members joining from uh, deposits and lo loans, etc. They're all uh, uh, recorded and governed by smart contracts. So, uh, and, and that is uh, publicly uh, presented. We currently do that on a, on a private uh, Ethereum blockchain. Uh, but we definitely don't rule out uh, deploying it on the public blo uh, Ethereum blockchain. It's just for our proof of concept purpose. It was not uh, necessary yet to do that. Uh, but indeed, everybody can continuously uh, inspect uh, and verify that everything is, is uh, being handled as, as advertised. And one step further, because it's uh, also the, the smart contract code that's on this blockchain, you can verify that the, the behavior of the, of the whole system is going to be correct uh, going forward as well. Because you know that the <coughs> smart contract is not going to suddenly uh, make money disappear or... It can uh, only do certain things and it can't do other things. Yeah. So it's very clear in terms of... It behaves uh, according to rules and you can continuously uh, inspect those rules. Yeah. So what, what does your proof of concept do currently? Uh, it's, uh, it offers uh, a course at the functionality of, of money circles. So uh, you can um, <coughs> like create an account, uh, connect to uh, um, uh, create a circle or, or join existing circles um, and make uh, deposits in those circles. Uh, an important thing to stress about the finances within circles is that it's really a pool of money within that circle. So the benefits are shared and the risks are shared. Risks are shared. So yeah. uh, anyone who is a member of a circle, they can deposit money and it then becomes part of the pool of money in the circle. And uh, anyone taking out a loan is uh, not never taking out a direct peer-to-peer -peer loan to a person, but you take out a loan from the circle. It's probably uh, worth just saying about how we've leveraged Uphold as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, so... Um, uh, what we really need uh, to, to uh, make this accessible to like uh, all of the markets that we described is to be able to deal with the currency that uh, these people deal with. People get bills and pay and do groceries uh, here in the UK in pounds, so you need to be able to deal with pounds. Um, this is a problem that, that is going to be solved in, in various ways on Ethereum, I believe. Um, and currently it's not, um, but uh, Uphold, formerly called uh, Bitreserve, they uh, do solve this problem in, a, in an interesting way. Um, it's not fully decentralized, but it's uh, fully transparent. And what they do is they offer you the ability to deposit money, be it in Bitcoin or be it in pounds or other currencies, uh, keep it in an account and transfer it to other Uphold members. So what we did with our proof of concept is um, uh, connect it to the Bitreserve API. Um, so anyone who can um, set up an account with, with Bitreserve, does the, the KYC, etc., 
uh, then they can start using uh, the money circles proof of concept and then they can transfer money from their uphold wallet, if you will, account to uh, two money circles and uh, take out loans from the money circles and uh, take it out uh, through uphold as well and transfer it from their, uh, their UK bank account back and forth. So essentially you're looking to solve the volatility of like the problem is yeah, that exactly. Ether is too volatile for people to make loans in, right? Yeah, it would ruin the re the interest for potentially both parties. A fluctuation in Bitcoin, for example, would defeat lending something at 2% if it loses 10% of its value. Yeah. Um, and also it could compound the debt to somebody that's borrowing. So for us, it had to be fiat pegged. Um, the great thing about Uphold is I think they do something like 33 cu currencies, or maybe even more, global currencies. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so that was yeah, that was critical for us. Okay, so um, so one of the questions I had was um, the one of the one of the unsolved problems that I see with uh, lending on the blockchain is it's hard to do fractional reserve banking, while the conventional system can do fractional reserve banking. Sure. And uh, perhaps would you would you say that because of fractional reserve banking, the cost of loans could be cost of borrowing could be cheaper in the conventional system than a Bitcoin based system or a Ethereum based system? Well for us to be honest with you the, the main, um, so we also want to kind of target banks um, so we're looking at getting this into an accelerator uh, that's driven by a particular bank um, and so for us um, we see the problem that we discussed with credit unions more around the savings to loans ratio. A lot of banks, high street banks, w would love to be able to lend more money. And if they could lend more money, they could give better saving returns to their customers. But they can't because they're constrained by how their appetite at risk and how they look at risk. So what we're looking to do is to bring new parameters that enable them to lend more money. And we think that that will benefit all parties, um, especially savers. Um, because the savers are suffering as much as the people that are borrowing, right? You know, the people that are borrowing, the locked out of uh, traditional credit markets, are having to use unsustainable payday loan companies like, you know, 1,000 APR at the end of the year. Um, and um, somebody that's got a savings account might be getting 1% on, mm -hmm. on, you know, the money that they put aside for their pension. So um, we think there's a major imbalance. Actually, you've got a load of people with money that they'd like to lend, and we've got a load of people that would like to borrow, and, and, and both of those things we think money circles can solve by introducing social dimensions into the mix. Ah, so, so even without involving fractional reserve banking, you suspect that there's a market for it because there's a huge pool of savings and a huge pool of people that well, yeah, borrow? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in credit unions, uh, uh, credit unions already exist uh, in, in, in many locations, and they don't do fractional reserve. Right. Uh, in fact, they do uh, about uh, half or less of their reserve because of the savings uh, to lendings ratio. Mm -hmm. So basically, the, the, for every 100 pounds that's deposited, only 50 pounds are, are, are uh, borrowed out. And the rest is sitting there because they cannot, uh, let alone that for every 100 you would lend out 1,000 mm pounds. -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so, we, don't, we don't think there needs to be more money. We just think there needs to be greater liquidity. So, so you're fundamentally about increasing the connections, the financial connectedness of people to each other, That's rather right. than rather than creating creating new money, as in the as yeah, as and, as and thereby uh, realizing a, a more ethical system. Hmm. So, so any any big idea like credit unions on the on a transparent international blockchain in which can basically so I think like one of the interesting things about your idea is uh, because a blockchain is international, sure. yeah, and absolutely. and you can give. Uh, certain guarantees to people even without uh, having to go to a certain local national jurisdiction you can basically make connections that would never have occurred right. because of the national silos that we find ourselves in and our relationships you know if you think about most of your relationships or my relationships they're, they're fairly international mm -hmm. um, yeah. directly or indirectly um, so I think you know increasingly people are becoming more globally aware so you know things like um, Kiva show um, that people are prepared to lend to, to somebody in a, a totally different uh, world. You know, um, I think a huge percentage of Kiva goes to Kenya for some reason, and most of the money comes from the West. Um, so, so, so it shows that those, those boundaries are, are less. Um, but I actually think there are only so many people that would lend to somebody in Kenya because the social connection for them is that much less. So I think if you enabled it to the proximity of that social relationship to be more intimate. Um, because there's a huge proportion in the UK anyway, people that don't even have a savings account. They're yeah. not, the savings zero. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so that's that's like a long term economic problem mm -hmm. that needs to be addressed. Um, so I, I think we can help people save more as well, which is um, uh, hopefully going to stave off some issues down the line when you've got an aging population and no pension. Yeah. So, um, so any big idea needs to start at a very s targeting a very small niche and small group of people because right. only a small niche is attackable by a small set of uh, founding team. Right. Do you think you have a s you have discovered a small niche that is the perfect test case for an idea like this? Yeah, so we've got a great team. So um, Money Circles is actually born out of um, a blockchain incubator that we've got. So we're creating um, a startup every three months, um, which we seed, and, and the model is we then put it into an accelerator. So a key thing for us, not just specific to Money Circles, but generally, is to very quickly get a startup um, into um, some kind of vertical uh, incumbent enterprise. So um, uh, in the instance of Money Circles, it's finding a financial services company that has an accelerator um, that the company can partner with from day one. And so to tap into their global network, their knowledge base. Um, so that's the first part. The second part is um, whenever we do a startup, we always bring in a management team from that industry. So they're not blockchain people, we're the blockchain people. Yeah. Um, we bring in a management team of people usually with no less than 15 years, it's typically about 20 years within that vertical. So in the instance of Money Circles, um, we've got uh, two, two members of the team, uh, one who's got over 20 years um, doing uh, technology and financial service organisations like JP Morgan, uh, Barclays um, and the London Stock Exchange um, and then the other partner which is critical to this growth piece um, is a guy who's one of the foremost credit union experts in the UK uh, and alternative lending experts um, he's actually uh, helping the government the UK government with the uh, national rollout of the credit union expansion program so he's got um, about 20 years dealing with credit unions setting them up for people he's in the middle of setting up the largest credit union the UK's ever had, which is uh, the Retail Association, which is millions of members. Um, so for us, um, by bringing in that management team day one, we've got people that have already got those relationships, so we can go and win some test customers, and, and hopefully alongside um, the, the kind of vertical accelerator, um, the management team and them can, can engage key players in the market to get a, a good test case quickly. Um, so for us, it's about how can we accelerate something from concept to scale um, as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. Anything to add to that, Aaron? Yeah, so the... So specific community you're thinking? <coughs> yeah, well, we have, uh, like, the, the, the connection will uh, uh, surely be uh, through uh, through credit unions in the, in the UK. And uh, there's, there's, like, there's several that we're uh, scanning, scoring, targeting to see, well, this, this could be a really good uh, uh, cooperation uh, both ways for... Uh, for them as, as a platform to, to build on and for money circles as a, as a, a chance to, uh, to basically shine. So money circles is not itself targeting to be an administrator, right? Like, so if, if you have a money circle of... Exactly, Tar uh, money circles is very much targeting itself not to be an administrator and not yeah. to have control over funds or uh, anything. So, so essentially what money circles could allow me to do is if I, if I as a person have a network of people I know in Europe that want to network of Indians, let's say, yeah. that want to uh, loan money to people, and I know students in India that want to borrow money. Mm -hmm. right? Then I, as a person, I have the social network to do this. Yeah, I can go to your platform, uh, go to your software, uh, exactly. become an administrator, and set up a system very quickly that allows me to connect funds from here. To, uh, to borrowers in India exactly. and basically receive some kind of administration fee on behalf of all these people, right? So the, 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 the administrator um, doesn't make a profit for doing it. Um, I mean, the commercial model is in development, um, but the basic principle is, you know, the, the, the savers earn interest and, and, and the lenders are paying that interest. Um, and that circle have a certain um, default ratio built into it. And so you create a circle because you want to save, mm -hmm. not because you want to profit from people saving um, uh, 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 directly. So 
Um, so the administrator is literally the, the, the facilitator of a circle. And a big part of um, what we'll be doing is uh, it, it's, a, it's a marketplace of circles. So the idea is, um, let's say you're um, somebody that wants to save, you can uh, open up the app, it'll be mobile first. Um, you'll be able to uh, try and find a circle that meets your financial and social parameters. It could be one near me, it could be um, within my profession, it could be um, with a savings return of this or a default rate of that. Uh, and it will match you with circles um, that you can request to join. Um, if you don't find a circle that meets your parameters, be it social, financial or both, then you will be able to create your own money circle. Um, but of course then the onus is on you to bring in enough people, so you wouldn't be able to create a circle with just you. Right? You, could, you could seed a circle, but then you'd have to invite in people from your network. Um, so what's critical for us is it overlays into things like Facebook, um, where it will actually find people in your LinkedIn network or your Facebook network or your Twitter network and find what circles they're already a member of um, or easily invite them in to, to form a circle. So the technology will enable people to very quickly, um, uh, I guess, um, uh, overlap their, their social networks on, in, into, a, into a circle. And so how do you make money building a platform that perhaps runs on Ethereum blockchain <coughs> with all of the contracts that can be copied by anybody? Yeah, well, the commercial model is still under development, but there, of course, there are very various angles uh, to it. Uh, you can consider uh, fees, you can consider uh, uh, free circles up to a certain amount and paid circles above. Uh, you can also consider um, more highly uh, secured uh, circles in terms of uh, being uh, fully credit union regulation proof what the credit union, uh, a larger credit union will uh, require or being a more uh, uh, small size uh, as, as you suggested an individual that sets up a small circle for friends. So there's, there's lots of options, I don't know if you had to add yeah, to you, that. Yeah, you've kind of got um, three revenue streams. Um, so you've got um, and again, this is all in development, but uh, uh, in principle, a perceit. So, and as Aaron said, that can be different thresholds. So you might not charge that for people that want to create a circle for their village of 50, 100 people. Um, but at a certain scale, you, you would charge perceit. Um, you've got for institutional circles, so circles set up by a bank or by a credit union, you'd, um, you'd charge a setup cost because it would need to integrate into the existing systems. Um, and uh, the third one is advertising because it's effectively a marketplace. Um, the idea is that you can promote your circle um, ahead in the search results, you know, similar to Google advertising. Of course, it would be clearly stated that it's a sponsored circle rather than a natural one. Um, so they're, they're the three areas that we're, we're looking at for revenue. Cool. Really nice to have you on the show. Thanks. Jamie and Aaron. Thank you.